Long story short, it's this one. If you're dying to jump into the game, this is objectively the best gun you can have. Long story long, however, it depends. Will you be facing armored suspects? Are you doing a pacifist run? Are you John Wick and can only use pistols? Or do you have soft hands that cannot control recall? All these factors play a role in deciding what your best weapon of choice would be, and today we'll be going over a few of the best weapons for each situation, as well as the attachments you should run with them. And before you start, do keep in mind that everything I'm about to say is absolutely objective and correct, so if you disagree, you should absolutely let me know in the comments below and start your own civilized discussions down there. So, I just want to lay out a couple of things that a gun would have to be able to do before it can be considered a good gun. First off, it needs to be effective at neutralizing your target. But for you Americans out there, it needs to have MUSTAPIN POWER! Because if it doesn't, this happens. And next up, it also has to have good ammo capacity, which all of the primer weapons do, except for this one for some reason. And the last thing a gun needs before it can be considered a good gun is that it needs to be able to have fast follow-up shots. And of course, there are many other things that can make or break a gun, but for our purposes today, we'll be focusing on just these three. And that's all I have for my intro, so let's begin. And now that we're actually done with the intro, you might be thinking, what makes the 10mm MP5 the best gun in the game? What makes it better than the rest of them? What makes it so much more deadly than all of the other weapons in the game? And the simple answer to that is that it's not. It's simply the most versatile. With the time to kill and ready or not being so short, most of the guns in the game can kill in 3-4 shots anyways. The MP5 along with the other SMGs sit in this sweet spot where it can kill if you really need it to, while still being able to gently suggest someone into surrendering on pretty much all of the maps in the game. On top of that, the 10mm MP5 also has its burst function, which allows it to kill suspects with one click of a mouse button, or at least stagger them enough to a point where they just might consider surrendering, allowing you to arrest them alive and gain 30 more points for each suspect, getting you a way higher score for the mission, which gives you a lot more room for error if you want that S rank unlock. But you may be saying, what if I don't like the MP5? What if the idea of picking something just because it's the best gun in the game seems absolutely disgusting to you? What if you think the MP5 is way too tame and would rather have something that's more entertaining to shoot? Because if that's you, or if you just don't care if they surrender or not, the next few guns on this list will definitely be for you. Now these next two guns are at complete different ends of the spectrum. One of them rewards you for being accurate, giving you the satisfaction of pulling the trigger with each shot fired. While the other one, on the other hand, has a more creative interpretation of bringing order to chaos. On one hand, the Mark 18 has the lowest recoil of all the rifles in the game, or at least it feels that way. With minimal muzzle climb and none of the weird SR-16 recoil, it allows for extremely fast follow-up shots, making it deadly up close. It also fires the full power 5.56 NATO round instead of the dinky 9mm, meaning it can actually do something at ranges past 2 meters. The P90 on the other hand takes the same accuracy by volume of fire to heart and simply deletes everything it comes in contact with, given that the thing in question is no more than a park bench away. Another merit that the P90 has is that it is the gun with the highest ammo count of all the guns in the game. With 50 rounds of mag, you could possibly bring up to 450 rounds into a mission, ensuring you don't run out of ammunition or you excessive force everyone into the ground. And now that we're done with the lethal options, what if you're going for that S rank and need to go non-lethal? Out of the 3 4 non-lethal options out there, which one is the best? Out of the 3 primary options, the beanbag shotgun is the best one with the highest chance of forcing a surrender, with its downside being that you can accidentally kill someone if you shoot them in the head. The pepper wall guns have a lower chance of coercing a surrender, the suspect stumbling away when shot instead of surrendering 9 out of 10 times. Most of the time, it doesn't even take that long before they start shooting you again, when you successfully stun them. On the other hand, when you shoot someone with a beanbag shotgun, it usually staggers them to a point where they limp and can't hop away, and in most situations, will give up pretty fast if you shoot them again. And you'll be surprised with how far you can actually reach with this thing, given that these are apparently low power rounds. In addition, 
Now that 1.0 has released, they changed it so that pepper balls create this cloud that blinds you instantly if you walk too close to the suspect that you just shot. Combined with their weak ability to force a surrender out of suspects, it's really hard to pick them over the shoddy. That being said, if you really want to use a pepper ball gun because you don't want to accidentally decapitate someone, pick the VKS because it has more ammo than whatever this wannabe MP7 is. And of course, do not forget that the taser exists and that's always a viable option. Whichever pistol you choose mostly depends on your personal preference and unless you're doing a challenge or a patrol loadout, they are mostly seen as a last resort and function as such. Usually, I carry the 5.7 if I'm running a shield just because reloading is so slow with it, but otherwise, I run the Glock because it jams up less when you try to rapid fire it. And pro tip, if you're going non-lethal and really don't want the AI to ruin your run, you can remove all of the secondary ammo from their kits and they won't be able to use their sidearms. For attachments, the foregrip and muzzle brake gives the lowest recall when compared to the suppressor and angle grip. Whichever foregrip you choose doesn't really matter because they both are pretty much the same and the difference is negligible. The suppressor is cool if you want to run night vision and don't want all the muzzle flash to blind you with each shot, but otherwise, the muzzle brake is the best when it comes to low recall. For optics, I like to run the EOTech if it's available because the red dots are just never bright enough and you can't see them most of the time. And for that reason, I don't like running the G36 because you can't put an EOTech on it, and I would rather be able to see what I'm shooting instead of having slightly faster follow up shots. And for the overbarrel thing, I run the white light. Some people like to run the arrow laser, but I just don't use night vision enough to justify it. Just run whatever you want. Except for a select few, all of the guns in this game are viable and do have somewhat unique playstyles to them. So pick whichever one looks cool to you and experiment with them to see which one is best suited to your playstyle. But if you ever get stuck on a level, just remember the MP5 will be there waiting for you. And that's all I have for this video. I need to go play arena real quick so that's why this video is kinda short. Do remember if you disagree with any of my opinions, feel free to express yourselves down below in the comments. It's a safe space and you can say whatever you want as long as YouTube allows it. So see you next time, remember to subscribe if you want more. Bye!